Thank you very much. So I'm going to be presenting some of the work that we have been doing at the very large district scale geothermal field. And we have been monitoring the site using a, a DTA survey, a, a fairly large DTA survey, about five kilometers, uh, six kilometers long. I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, my colleagues, uh, Jim Pinchin and Dave Hart, that have been instrumental in all the work that we have been doing in the last few years. And the students have participated over the, the, the length of the project. Adam McDaniels, uh, Lauren Thomas, and Mitchell Laken. And in particular, I would like to thank the uh, EPIC system that allow us to be able to work on the, the system. So EPIC system is a very large uh, medical database and software company. In the last 20 years, they have grown from a very, very small company to have a campus of about 10,000 employees uh, on a suburb of Madison, Wisconsin. The name of the town is Verona, and the, the town itself has only about 10,000 people. This is a huge, huge facility. And if you ever come to this part of the area, uh, the, send, me, send me an email and I can take you to the site because it's quite, quite interesting, the whole campus. They have all the buildings there. Are, they have different things, for example, Harry Potter and uh, Star Wars. It's, it's very, very, very cool. Um, anyways, they have 10,000 employees. And one of the things that they have been doing is they try to be able to offset some the energy that they are consumed by using uh, renewable energy systems. So they have built uh, and installed six uh, 1.8 megawatt uh, uh, wind turbines in just north of Madison. They have also until about last year, the largest um, solar uh, uh, solar field in, in, the, in the county uh, in campus. And they also have installed a number of geothermal fields and also a heat sink pond on the site to be able to offset about 50% of the energy consumption on the heating and cooling that they have on the site. They started with a small field, field number one, with the nominal capacity of 2.4 megawatt. And the last field that they built was field number four with 25, uh, 20, 2580 uh, boreholes at the depth of about uh, 150 meters with the capacity, nominal capacity of 26.5 megawatt. And that is the one that is highlighted in, in green, and that is the one that I'm going to I'm going to be talking uh, uh, mostly during the presentation. So, in the site, uh, they, they have a, a very a fairly interesting geology uh, with many different layers with different type of uh, uh, thermal properties from the conductivity and to the heat capacity. I'm sorry, and my slides did not appear. The the units they are there, but I don't know for some reason that you appear. I will correct it and send it again. Um, the, the, the thermal properties of the different layers. I want to point out a couple of things. There are two aquifers. One is the upper aquifer and the other one is the middle aquifer. Uh, so to be able to monitor the effect of the geo, uh, uh, the groundwater on the uh, geothermal response, we put um, um, PSO, uh, piezometers at the, at the two, two different depths to be, be able to monitor that. I want to, to point out that the middle aquifer is a aquifer where the city of Verona gets a, a drinking water. And we could see the pumping, the, the pumping effect uh, on, the, on the responses of the geothermal, uh, the geothermal response. So um, a one, a, the upper aquifer is a dolomite and it has quite a bit of a car formation that you can see it there. So there is quite a bit of interaction and in the areas that they are under the water table, there is quite a bit of heat uh, transports. Um, Transport. So we install a DTA system uh, with a fiber. We put the fiber there. There uh, we have about six kilometers on, and we put those in in, in different uh, temperature monitoring wells within the field, and also we put also a thermal monitoring wells just outside the field with a, a piezometers to be able to monitor the flow direction and also what is going to be the temperature outside the field. We use a 16 channel multiplex and sensor net uh, monitoring the system. And uh, we have the fiber optics, it's, well, it's a simple uh, uh, clear curve uh, um, OM3 uh, cable that, is, uh, that it was placed inside on, on a plastic tubing of a slightly, slightly larger than a quarter of an inch. And that protected uh, to be able to, to, from kinking and also to be able to provide uh, uncoupling and not having any type of a strain on, on, on the fibers. 
We also put some sensors in two types of geothermal exchange well, and those are in the bottom right, a Rigan and a U pipe. The Rigan is a coaxial type of geothermal exchange pipe. And we are not monitoring right now because we cannot control very well how much is the water flow that goes through those pipes. But we are planning to put some um, um, flow meters to be able to monitor the response because the, the company indicates that they are going uh, the Rigan uh, geothermal exchange has a better uh, thermal performance. And that is quite important because uh, EPIC try to be able to um, condition the field for the two different seasons. One of the issues that we have on the site is that there was large cable and we have quite a bit of a splicing. Uh, and because it was going to be a, a, a long-term uh, system for monitoring temperature, we have to be, come up with different, uh, we, we re-evaluated all the calibration methodologies to be able to evaluate how we're going to do it. So we, the, we finally decided to use a centralized dynamic. We are calibrating every single, after every single measurement, double ender and remote access. It's a important it was remote access because as we've been monitoring the system, we learn more and more about how the system was behaving. So we changed, for example, the, the cold bath. So by the way, the bath that we are using, we are uh, having a cold bath in the, in both ends and we have a warm bath in, in both ends of the cables. And the whole idea that having redundancy allow us to be able to locate better the location of the different places and be able to come up with the uh, calibration parameters in a better way. So this is what we have. This is, a, 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 we have it on the board on the site. The system has been performing very well until last year where the um, hard drive of the DTS system Crash and we have problems trying to be able to get a fix with COVID and it's too bad because we cannot measure the response of the system during COVID where we don't have a, a large number of employees on the site. But this, we are going back to the swing right now. So what I wanted to show you just here is some of the uh, water, uh, waterfall temperature plots. And I wanted to point out to some of the responses. You can see that this is over three years and we see at the top a blue and a red markers, and you see that is the temperature leaking. That is the very, very close to the near surface, and we see quite a bit of diffusion on the system, and diffusion continues over multiple seasons. And I also want to point out the pre sheet that is the dolomite, that we see that the temperature doesn't increase there as much as we have seen in other places. But what we have seen is that uh, when we, they started the operating the, the site, EPIC started to dump quite a bit of heat into, the, into this uh, uh, porthole field, increasing the temperature. And it has been increasing over time, but they started to regulate it. The reason that they did that is because as soon as they, uh, uh, they put this uh, uh, bore field in, op in operation, what they did is start resting the other bore fields to be able to bring it into a more temperature conditions. The problem that EPIC has is that because of the, the, the computer power that they use and the number of employees that they have, this is a, 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 a cooling dominated type of system. They have to cool all their facilities, even though that we are up north and Wisconsin is pretty cold. They only use it to warm it up only about two months of the year. So trying to be able to evaluate that and try to be uh, one of the objectives of the project is to be able to improve the engineering use of these fields so we try to be able to evaluate the response. And the, the system be, behaves like a liquid reservoir. Not only works as, as a radiator, but also can store its temperature. And we wanted to evaluate that. And so we can measure how much is the, the heat that EPIC takes or removes from the site. And we can also monitor how much is the storage because we monitor the temperature on, uh, across the, the field. One so more minute. We, yes, thank you. So we can evaluate the response. And as you can see that the response of the uh, no, the, the heat storage is much more, the, the swing in the amplitude of the swing is much more on the sun and gravel on the surface because it's connected towards the, uh, the, the surface. And we can also monitor what is how EPIC is managing all the different components of the site. And as you can see, borehole field is the one that right now is storing the most amount of heat while the other ones are working in a much more balanced way. And that is, a, it is important for the overall term. Now, uh, we can evaluate the response and we can see that there is a, the dissipated if it's truly behaving as a liquid reservoir. 
And that is quite important to be able to have a long-term performance of the site. We, all the heat that is put, we want to be able to remove it so it can be balanced, even though that the demand is not. So how we are planning to use this one and how, how we are going to plan to potential enhancement. And one of the ideas is to be able to start using pumpings to be able to either allow the more storage of the heat on the site or be able to up improve dissipation. And that will allow us hopefully to be able to use the system in a much more efficient way. So with that, thank you very much. These are two of the students that they are in the vault after going one of the calibrations and checking the system is working effectively. Thanks.